Cancer prevention is so important to our mission. MD Anderson was one of the first institutions in our country to recognize the importance of prevention. We embedded it in our mission statement. We invested in it over decades because we know that today 50% of cancers can be prevented if we could just deploy the science and the insights that we have now. We've moved forward to establish prevention on a scientific base. I think Dr. Lameda was particularly notable because of his foresight. He understood that today's focus may be on treatment, but that the ultimate aspiration of an institution like MD Anderson should be toward cancer prevention. Multiple investigators are all coming to the table focused on cancer prevention, both in the laboratory and the translational area with clinicians bringing and developing clinical trials. I think in 40 years, many cancers will be prevented such that we don't even need to treat them. It's actually bench to bedside a population because the prevention center accesses a wide population who are healthy and who come to MD Anderson for its expertise in screening. There's been an increasing uh, recognition of the importance of cancer prevention through not smoking, maintaining a healthy diet, and exercising. I think that this has really gained attention of the public at large as a way that we can prevent cancer and improve the health of our population. It is the judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. Back in 1964, this first Surgeon General's report linking tobacco and cancer really opened the door to public health broadly and the importance of behaviors in causing cancer. The public's understanding of cancer as a process rather than an event has advanced tremendously, and that opens up a whole field of opportunities. Cultural change is an important thing, and the opportunities around cancer prevention are huge. And if we can figure out how to approach this through policy changes, through appropriate education, and through providing access to the services that we know work to reduce cancer, then we can make a big difference. Where the excitement really lands for people in, in our discipline is that we know we're doing something that's really good for the entire population. So we want to move those interventions into the digital space. We are presently working to develop what will be the first all-digital trial in smoking cessation. We can answer the questions most critical and in some cases really historic in the field, which is what are the parts of the genome most likely to be at play in cancer initiation. What we have here is the ability not only to make discoveries, but to really carry them over the finish line. So our goal is to increase the vaccination rates in the state of Texas. We are making major efforts and the HPV vaccination will reduce the cervical cancer. Essentially, we could eliminate the cervical cancer. Epidemiologic data tells us that the chance of getting cancer and the risk of dying from cancer is not equally borne across all populations. There are some groups that have higher chance of getting cancers, and the reason for that is what we're trying to understand and then obviously being able to do something about it. The way in which we seek to eliminate cancer disparities is through community engagement. And I think that's very important for a cancer center to make sure that we have the eyes and the ears and the minds of the community when we're doing anything. We'll always need treatment centers, but progressively, prevention will be seen as plan A rather than plan B or C. And in the public more broadly, we'll prioritize prevention as the first best strategy to deal with cancer. Prevention is the first step in actually ending cancer. And it's exciting to think that this area is just gonna to continue to grow and it will probably change the paradigm of what we think of cancer.